Let's start with <clears throat> mortgages. I want to go over the very basics of a mortgage because a lot of us probably will be buying a home in, in the near future. So basically on your y-axis here, you've got the loan amount. So a mortgage is basically a loan uh, to, to purchase a, a property. In this case, we're going to be talking about our primary residence. On the x-axis, we've gone years. And you can take up to 30 years now to essentially pay down a mortgage. So this red line here, this is this is the amortization line. So amortization, all that means is that you are paying off your mortgage. You're paying off that loan amount over time. And you can take your time to do this. So basically, it starts here at the white dotted line, and it eventually goes down to zero over, uh, over a few decades. Now, when you pay off your mortgage, there are going to be two components to your payments. The first one is this orange line here. And so that is interest. So every month when you pay your lender, a part of that payment is going to be going towards interest. And in fact, not paying down uh, this, this principal, this loan amount. The interest is actually quite, it, it's higher early on in the mortgage. And then it starts to, the pace of it starts to decrease later on in the mortgage. The other part of your payment is going to be principal. So you can see that in the early years of the mortgage, every month, let's say you're paying $4,000. Well, more of it, much more of it is going to be interest and a lot less of it will be principal. There will be a point in time where these lines cross and then eventually you're gonna be paying more principal than interest. One thing to keep in mind though is there is a total cost and that is the green line. So if you add up these two lines, the interest and your principal, they're gonna add up to this green line. And so basically as time goes on, the total cost, so that's the principal, that's plus the interest on that home, it, it's a lot higher than that initial purchase price for the home. Let's get into this in more detail. So this is what we did. It was a purchase price of $790,000. Now, 20% down payment. Generally speaking, you will have to make a 20% down payment on your, on your home. Um, if you choose to make less than that, then you're going to have to get some mortgage insurance. You may, in fact, get a better rate because the mortgage now has some insurance behind it, but then that mortgage insurance also comes with a cost. So generally speaking, 20% down payment on the purchase price. So in our case, the number was $158,000. Okay, so let's just quickly break down the different types of mortgages. We hear a lot about uh, the fixed rate mortgage. Uh, so this very simply, if you enroll in a fixed uh, rate mortgage, you're going to be paying the exact same interest rate for anywhere from one year to 10 years. The thing with fixed rate mortgages is there can be a very hefty penalty to rate these mortgages. And you are looking at somebody who has broken two fixed rate mortgages already. The statistics are that anybody who enrolls in a fixed rate mortgage seven out of 10 people will break. I am two for two. The two times that I had a fixed rate mortgage, I broke them both and I paid hefty penalties. Um, more so on the second one when I refinanced in 2021 on my current home. And that fee alone to break the mortgage was $32,000. It got rolled into my new mortgage. I did end up saving more than that, but the bottom line is the lenders, the banks, they, will, they can charge you anywhere from 1% to 5%. Uh, of your mortgage to break your fixed rate uh, mortgage. So hefty penalties. Floating rate mortgages. We don't hear this term too much, but I put it in here intentionally because there are two types of floating rate mortgages. The first one is the one we hear about more often. It is the variable rate mortgage, okay? The second one is the adjustable rate mortgage. So with either type of floating rate mortgage, the penalty to break this mortgage, it's usually much less harsh. So it's three months of interest. Today, with interest rates being so high, that penalty to break is obviously getting higher. But when the interest rate eventually with time, as I'm gonna show you, things always go down with time, that penalty will decrease. And we're gonna differentiate between the variable and the adjustable rate mortgages in the upcoming slides. So first point I would like to drive home is that a fixed rate mortgage does not follow uh, the prime rate or the overnight rate. The fixed rate mortgage is in fact dictated by bond yield. So you can go to this website called marketwatch.com and just type in Canada five-year government bond. This is an image from last week. The yield on the bond was about 3.4%. So usually the current fixed rate is around one and a half percentage points 
more than this. That's the, the difference that you're going to expect. So for example, earlier this week, there was some, some news that fixed rate mortgages went down this week. Well, why is that? Even though our prime rate has been going up, it's because the yield on the government bonds earlier this week went down. So that influences the fixed rate. Something to keep in mind. You can go to this website here, ratehub.ca, and you can basically explore what the current best mortgage rates are, and they'll give you the best fixed rates, the best variable rates. And right now they're, they're all, generally speaking, over 5%. <clears throat> and so just, just to keep in mind, what does that mean? So that means that for every $100,000 of mortgage, the lender is going to be asking for $5,000 of interest. So if you have a million dollar mortgage, the lender in one year alone is going to be asking for $50,000 of interest. So we're going to talk about how these fees can add up over time. Now, in contrast to the fixed rate, the variable rate mortgage, so it follows the prime rate or the overnight rate. This is a graph from the early 1990s all the way until now. So it is showing the overnight rate, okay? So the overnight rate right now at the very right-hand side of the graph, it is currently at 3.75%. You add 2.2% to that to get to today's prime rate. So today's prime rate is 5.95%. A couple trends though, the overall trend of interest rates is down. You go through cycles. So basically every time interest rates rise, the general trend is that they seem to plateau for a good two years or so. Um, and then in terms of the, the third trend, you know, eventually what goes up will, will have to come down. Now, interestingly, the prime rate hit almost 16% in 1991, which is absolutely crazy to think about that. Uh, the prime rate, uh, or sorry, the overnight rate, sorry, went to its lowest in March 2020, and it stayed that way because of the pandemic, went down all the way to 0.25%. And the average rate, in fact, since the early 90s until uh, early 1990s until now has been about five and a half, five, five point six percent, which is kind of where we are now for our mortgage rates. So what goes up must come down. Things generally tend to plateau up around two years or so. That's what history shows us. And I think it is important to understand history. So let's keep the numbers really simple. We'll uh, take an example. We'll assume you're buying a home for a million dollars. That's the purchase price. Generally speaking, you put down 20%, $200,000. So that leaves you with a mortgage of $800,000. This is a website here that I love to use. If you just type in mortgage calculator on Google, you will come to this. It'll be one of your first, uh, first yields that you'll see first links. And so let's just kind of put the information in here and see what we get. So we're going to put down $800,000 into the mortgage amount. We will take a typical fixed rate right now just to keep it simple, at 5.39%. We'll say we want to pay the home off over 25 years. That's your amortization period. We'll say monthly payments, and we'll say that we're going to lock in this rate for, for five years. Forget the prepayments right now. I'll talk about that later. It spits out this. Just focus on the term right now. Forget about the amortization period. The term is your five years. Five years has 60 months. Your mortgage payment monthly is going to be four, just under $5,000. But notice how much is going to principal, $87,000, more than $200,000 of what you are putting out over that five years is going towards interest. Now, if you were stuck with a 5.39% interest rate for the entire 25 years, you can see that you've paid off the principal, but look how much interest you're paying over time, almost $650,000. So you paid $1 million for that house, but you're actually, in fact, paying a lot more. So it's just something to keep in mind when interest rates are this high. There is so much of your monthly payment that is going to be going towards interest and not your principal. And so now that brings up the question, like, what do people do today in terms of risk-free rates and managing their finances? I talked to a broker very recently. We released a podcast on mortgage updates just yesterday. And we were kind of talking about how a lot of people now, if they have the ability to do so, they are starting to make prepayments on their variable rate mortgages. And we're going to talk, get into prepayments shortly, but a prepayment is basically a payment that you make in addition to all of this. You can do it for a fixed rate mortgage as well, but often a variable rate mortgage will give you the ability to make larger prepayments. And when you're making a prepayment, every dime of that money that you're putting in the prepayment is going towards principal. So you're paying down your mortgage faster. 
And in today's environment, I mean, that, that's essentially your risk-free rate. You're, you're saving 5.3% on that entire prepayment that you're making. So it's something to, to keep in mind. It's certainly something that I'm doing. I'm not giving advice at all in this talk. I don't tell other people that they need to do that. But remember, for every $100,000 in mortgage today, you're paying $5,000 at least in interest. So it strengthens the argument, I think, for, for prepayments and paying down the mortgage faster if you can.